in your research, what did you come up with? What Reagan felt being in the heart of the Russian Empire, what he called the evil empire, even though he has the opportunity to address the future of the country, the students there. What do you feel about, were you able to come up with anything? Sure, yeah, I mean, his diaries were, were essential to us, and, uh, and they really kind of expressed his feelings in a lot of places. The oral histories um, at the University of Virginia, a lot of them untapped. There's a lot of nuggets in here that really haven't been, stories that haven't been told. And then I interviewed for a long time Secretary of State George Shultz, who at 93 has a memory that he can remember meetings like they were yesterday and telling stories. And so we sat at the Reagan Library and he just told me story after story about, about this. And specifically about Moscow, um, there was a lot of trepidation that uh, this was going to be a spectacle that the Soviets were trying to use the American president for their PR benefit. And there was a lot of doubt among conservatives whether Reagan was really going to give away the store uh, and look bad in Moscow, in the heart of the Soviet Union. So the summit before this was in Washington. And Gorbachev comes to Washington, and they're waiting for Gorbachev to arrive at the White House. And he's taking a long time. 15 minutes go by, 20 minutes go by. And suddenly, as the early days of CNN, uh, as another cable news network, I don't know if you can, uh, know it, but it's another cable news operation. But um, so Gorbachev is supposed to arrive, and suddenly they see an image on CNN that is Gorbachev on Connecticut Avenue in DC, getting out of his car to the cafes and lunch places along Connecticut Avenue. And he walks out with his wife, Reza, and he is bombarded with people saying, Gorby, Gorby, and he's shaking hands, kissing babies. I mean, it's an American politician stuff, work in the room. And here is the Russian, uh, the Soviet leader on his way to the White House doing this. He arrives at the White House about 40 minutes late. Reagan's outside, and he says, Reagan says to him, I see you had a great time. Welcome to Washington. Um, so, he had that moment. So when they arrive in Moscow, the Reagans had up their sleeve their own moment. They arrive in the Spasso house, uh, where they're staying. And Nancy Reagan says to the Secret Service, we are going to take a walk in the Arbat, a square, a market square just down the road. And they said, what? You know, they hadn't planned any of this. They hadn't told the KGB anything. And uh, she says, we're going to do it. Is that OK? And the Chief Secret Service officer said, OK. We can make it happen. So Marlon Fitzwater, the press secretary, gathered the pool. And they went out. And it was about 200 yards from where they're staying. They got in a, a limo to drive the 200 yards. But then they got out. And the marketplace is filled. And suddenly people start flocking in. And they're yelling, President Reagan, President Reagan. And suddenly these people are crowding in. And he hops up on a vegetable cart in the marketplace with Nancy Reagan. He pulls her up and he says, we just wanted to say hello. It's great to be here in Moscow. And everyone's chanting. And the crowds are flowing. And the press pool is like right in the middle of it. Well, it really got violent, and the KGB starts beating people around, you know, beating people off as they're crowding in, and the press pool suddenly loses the circle, and they crowd in, and they try to race back to the Spazo house, but there's more and more people coming. Helen Thomas was there, as well as the CBS reporter, and they get pushed out of the circle. And Nancy Reagan says, no, 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 she's with us. And she grabs Helen Thomas, pulls her back into the circle. They finally make it to the Spazo house, and everybody's exhaling and saying, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. And Nancy Reagan says, well, what did we think of that? Marlon, how did you think it went? And he doesn't miss a beat. He says, well, we lost our last best chance to lose Helen Thomas. <laughs> that you just don't, you didn't know at the time, and unless you go back and you look at, and you talk to people who were there, um, that's the kind of thing, the kind of granular detail that you can get into those moments and then bounce back.